Greetings and welcome to the Uplay Lounge. This is Ubisoft Live at E3. Yeah. 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 Welcome to everyone who is uh, joining us live on Twitch TV via the Ubisoft channel. Welcome to all of you guys, super VIP fans of The Division, here for a very special presentation of The Division. So, for those who are unfamiliar, if you have not been following The Division game on Twitter, uh, we are going to do an extensive Q&A, and we invite you to take part with the hashtag AskTheDivision. Uh, pretty simple, easy, and also elegant. We've got three wonderful human beings representing massive entertainment. Yes. Yeah, yeah I think we can. Yeah. Matthias Carlson on the far right. He is lead game designer. Yeah. Hi guys. Yeah, we got to keep that applause up so it doesn't fade by the time we get to Ryan. <laughs> David Pohlfeldt. Exactly. Yeah, managing director for Massive Entertainment. Hello. And Ryan Barnard. Hello, everyone. Game director. So this is obviously a, a very wonderful opportunity, and uh, and now that we've introduced you guys, we uh, we get a little bit of an idea for uh, what it is that you do. Um, I know we're all very excited to be here, fans, yourselves. Uh, it's a very exciting time to show off what the division has. And uh, Ryan, I know you want to uh, you want to tee us off with uh, some some beautiful spectacles. Absolutely, the absolutely. So first of all, thank you everyone for being here. This is awesome, and uh, this is kind of uh, a theme for us as you've seen we're really really uh, uh, invested in the community building a community for the game and it's all about you guys and your involvement and your participation is what makes that happen so I have the honor tonight not only of being here but kind of kicking off the show with uh, uh, the CGI that the trailer that we have that we're, we're so proud of uh, the work that the our talented brand team uh, put together <laughs> with uh, yes with the guys over at blur whoa now, my, now I'm freaking myself out. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, we're going to start off by, by, with that trailer. So it kind of sets up the universe, kind of sets the stakes uh, for who you'll be playing in this game and who you're uh, taking New York back for in the division. And I'll move. It's hard to watch something you love destroy itself, to see it fall apart. Disaster always feels so distant, detached. Someone else's struggle in some faraway place. It's not until it's in our city, at our doors, that we realize how fragile we are. All of us. All of this. <laughs>
Please, please no more. And the real truth is, no one watched, no one saw, wanted to see. <laughs> Where you go? Tragedy is invisible. People turn away from it. They run from it if they can. And it's hard knowing that you belong here. That your purpose lies amongst all this pain. But someone's gotta be there. To pick it up. To push back. Put the first piece back together. Put us all back together. Yeah. That boy, uh, that bad boy kicks you right in the feels, doesn't it? It really does. What'd you guys think of that? Yeah. Woo! What, what'd you guys think of that? Uh, I, it was from the first time I saw the, even the first draft, I knew it was going to be amazing. It's uh, uh, very, very talented people working on it, and it's, it's, it, it, it gets you here. Yeah. Yeah, I still get goosebumps <laughs> yeah. every time when that guy reaches out his hand. It's just and magic. It, it's great. I mean, it, it, it's amazing. We, we see how uh, these guys react to it. We see how the fans react to it uh, on social media. I haven't given a shout out to Antoine Mon, who is the uh, community developer for the division. Uh, he's taking pictures from the back. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't want to uh, appear on camera. I also realize as well that I, uh, I, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Zach Cooper, by the way. I get to uh, host this, this wonderful event. Um, and, you know, speaking about the community, I know you guys, uh, you know, with, with Antoine as a fantastic uh, vessel or, or chain to the community, um, you know, you guys are interacting with the community in, in wonderful ways. Yeah, you know, uh, coming here uh, at E3, is, it's incredibly emotional for us because we work so hard. A lot of the time you feel that you're in games development, uh, games development is being deep down in the trenches. And we think about you guys a lot. We dream about showing you what we're working on, and we think, come E3, we can finally show them some new stuff. We're still saving some. You will be very, very happy when uh, we announce a couple of things further down the line. So even though it's a little bit cheesy, please forgive me, because <laughs> it's very emotional to coming, uh, coming to E3 and finally getting to show some stuff. And I want to thank uh, Red Storm, wonderful partners, uh, Reflections. Yes. And it's a privilege to have those guys on. You know, they started the Clancy Games, so it's uh, incredibly cool to work with them. Also, thank you, Ubisoft, for giving us the time and the chance to do this game exactly like we want it to be. So that's very, very cool to have a publisher, publisher like that. Most of all, we want to thank you, the fans. Uh, you know, we read every single email you sent to Massive, every single thing you post on the forums. It's a huge inspiration to us, and it means a lot. And we're making this game for you guys. We want you to be happy, and we're so appreciative of what you do. It's very, very inspirational. So thank you, guys. Thank you. And, and David, I mean, we had, we had a chance to chat a little bit before we got things underway uh, on Twitch here. Um, and you, I mean, you said something that I've never heard uh, any representative of a dev team, let alone a managing director of a studio, um, I've never heard anyone say anything like this. You've got something uh, even more special planned for the fans. Yeah, we're, ve we're very, very happy about the uh, dialogue we're engaged in, the conversation we're having with the fans, and we plan to continue that. But we also plan to take it one step further, 
And you know, when we uh, meet you guys, you often have a lot of good ideas and you see things that we don't see or opportunities that we miss. So what we're going to do is we're going to give a couple of you, a few of you, a chance to be part of the dev team. We will have you over in Sweden. You'll spend time with the dev team, with the core creative director, everybody. You'll be in the meeting rooms. You'll have the pen. You'll be on the whiteboard. We're going to make you a part of what we do. So this is something we've already thought out how we're going to select a few lucky people. We're going to fly over to Sweden, of course, take good care of you, take you to some nice restaurants in Malmo. <laughs> they don't exist. Uh, <laughs> what? Liar, liar, liar. But we know that you will help us make a better game. And we know you dream about being a part of the dev team. So we're going to make it happen. My goodness. And uh, just follow us on Facebook. Yeah, 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 yeah. So just keep your eyes on Facebook, and uh, you'll find out how to get to Malmo and be part of our dev team. Thanks, guys. Looking forward to having you there. Whew, that is unreal. That is unreal. Another round of applause. That is, that is a, an incredible initiative. Um, you know, as a community developer uh, speaking to the, even the prospect of that being a reality um, is, is really mind-blowing. And I know, you know, Antoine is, is obviously off mic, off camera, but uh, I can no doubt assume that he is genuinely uh, just extremely enthusiastic about the idea of working that closely with the fans as well. Yeah, but um, it's not just Antoine. Antoine well, of course. Course, but it's the core team. We yeah. know that what you have to say is very, very good. You're smart people. We trust you. We, uh, you, we know you're going to help us make the best game ever. So thanks. Thumbs up. Um, so obviously yesterday was a big day uh, on a couple of fronts when you guys got to show off the game, whether it be through the CG trailer or the gameplay demo. Uh, we've also got another wonderful community exclusive here where we will have exclusive commentary from what we saw at Microsoft yesterday. So if we can go to that and we'll have Matthias uh, doing the commentary. Oh yeah. Walking us through. Take Matthias us through New York. Carlson. Oh yeah. Not that. Not that? No. Not no. That. That's the secret stuff for later. Oh boy. All right, so if we can back out of this and get to the, uh, yeah, that, that would be, yeah. <coughs> Uh, this is a pretty good opportunity to remind you guys, if you want to get involved in the uh, Q&A, which is going on immediately after this, use hashtag AskTheDivision. Here we go. All right, guys. So one thing that we find really striking about New York is that it's snow is falling, is falling down, down just calendar. a little bit. So the world's so quiet we'll and still. Santa's out there flying around on it. Underbelly of the city something that's going to be an effort for the game. We really want to tickle that exploration lust. And being open world, of course, a lot about choice, your choice. Where to go next and what to do next. So the map that we see here that we've shown a couple of times is a really vital tool for you to, to see the key locations, events, and activities around the world and, and decide where to go. And as we're moving down this corridor here, in a moment we're going to see one of the, the new core features for this year that we call Echo. And think of it as a data gathering tool that draws information from any sources you can get, like uh, security cameras and such. And when triggered by the players, it will render a three-dimensional augmented reality scene uh, around the players in the area where they are. And it can show you really key information about the environment you're in, the, uh, the narrative of the game, and also lead to some extra missions and rewards. And here we see a more, I think, human side of the, the virus hitting the city where a group of civilians are scrambling to get on the, the last train out of New York. And there heard a sound down the tunnel. I mean, it's a pretty serious setting. Uh, games are, of course, a lot, a lot about fun, but scenes like this can, can give you a clue of what happened to many of those who didn't make it out in time. And as we come up the stairs here, you're going to see that we are seamlessly joined into our group by, uh, by two, two other players. Another player, a third one, called Bronson here, uh, in the main game, and also the, uh, the drone companion that you can play on the tablet that we showed uh, last year and also in the booth at DC3. And here they're identifying a group of enemies, which one of them is what we call an elite, uh, really tough main threat of that fight. And the drone here is making the group aware that there are actually a couple of more enemies 
uh, of the deciders. So they're going to just try to take these guys out a bit more stealthily to make the upcoming fight easier. And you see Bronson there throwing out one of the many skills in the game. This one's called Tesla Trap, which basically jolts, saps anyone who gets in proximity and stuns them for, uh, for a little while. This last guy here, though, he manages to escape, and he's now alerting his uh, nearby allies. So we're effectively in combat with all the enemies in this in this area here. In a couple of seconds here, you're going to see uh, another skill being used that we call Strobe. Uh, which is a skill that temporarily blinds and disorients enemies, so you can reposition effectively or flank it, like, like in this case here. But here you're going to see the, the drone companion playing on the tablet up in the sky. He's going to use one of his more uh, offensive abilities, flushing this guy out of cover here, so the player on the ground can more effectively take him out. And Bronson there in the background, he didn't get into cover in time, so he's, he's, he's downed. But Megan, the, the third player there, she puts up another skill, the turret. Here it's modified as a flamethrower. And Buddy revives him, gets him back in the fight. And then they're basically mopping up the last couple of targets surrounding the elite I mentioned in the beginning. So they can all focus on him and take him down swiftly. And he drops some epic loot. All right. And in this case, this was the last step to unlocking, establishing what we call a base of operations, as you can see in the background there, which is like a strategic foothold, a safe haven for, for you or, or your group if you're playing co-op, that you can establish in various areas in the game. And as you progress through the game, you will be able to further upgrade these in many different ways to give yourself additional benefits and unlock new activities and content in the world. That was it. Woo! Nicely done. <laughs> Matthias Carlson, thank you very much. All right, so we are going to get into the Q&A portion of the evening, uh, which is a wonderful opportunity. Again, hashtag Ask the Division, and uh, you can get your uh, questions in if we have time. Uh, we certainly have a lot of questions already from in-house. We're going to start with a VIP, Brian Haas, who asks, how do you balance authenticity with fun? Something that I think any Clancy game has to deal with, but uh, let's hear about it from the uh, Division. Uh, sure, I can jump in on that one, I guess. Uh, it's, it's something that we think about a lot, actually, in the game. Uh, being a, a Clancy game, the pillars of Clancy being, you know, strategic combat, tech, uh, you know, pushing the limits of tech, uh, tactical combat, working together in a squad, and then wrapping that with an RPG, which generally these, game, these games get fantasy and they're, uh, uh, they kind of push the boundaries of reality in general. So really, uh, for us on the game, I, it, we, we start with research. So is something plausible? Does it make sense? Is it possible? Uh, and then from then, we, ad we adapt it to how can we use it in the game? How can we push that to be uh, uh, just near future, which is where our game is? And is it fun? And, and that's kind of the formula. So it's, it's pretty simple, but it always has to start with research. And there doesn't have to be a contradiction, I think. I mean, uh, many of the things that could happen in reality are quite fun to do. So, you know, you can build a game on that. Well, it looks like there are, uh, certainly from what we've seen al already, it looks like there's a lot of fun stuff to play with. Um, this question comes from Twitter, David M. Lopez 1. Are there classes in the game? If so, how are they different, important to the team? Yeah, sure. Uh, in, in the division, we actually don't want to, even though we're an RPG, to front load you as a player with a, with a player class choice. We want that to be a more organic journey that you, you go, go on as you, you see more and more about uh, the game, what it has to offer, and really find a play style that suits you, basically what you think is the most fun. And uh, therefore, we have a very, a very open and dynamic skill system that you progressively unlock as you go through the game, where you can make a lot of choices but also change your mind. Uh, so we think that's really the way to go for, for us, at least. Yeah, it's, it's flexibility and depth rather than kind of locking you into a role. 
because we still want to have that great trinity in, in group, group based, based games and uh, RPGs in general, where you have people that have a specific uh, uh, function in a group when you're playing together. But we don't want to lock you into that. So you'll be able to switch on the fly, as you've seen in, the, in, in multiple demos. Uh, Darkovi plays on Twitter, uh, used Ask the Division hashtag, and wants to know, uh, will there be AI or is it all PvP based, and how does taking places over work, which I think we got a taste of at the end of the demo there. Yes, uh, the, will there be AI? Uh, like enemies? Absolutely. So we've, we've seen uh, a couple of our first factions this year uh, with the thugs and the, the cleaners, the, the badass guys with the flamethrowers, which you will maybe see later. And uh, uh, so absolutely, we need to have kind of uh, the people that you're taking the city back from, um, kind of organized groups. And then what was the second part? Um, how does taking places over work? How does taking places over work? <laughs> I think it was establishing those bases yeah, like yeah, we saw. Yeah, I yeah. mean, uh, uh, the districts in the game kind of had st have statistics. So you'll be able to influence them uh, by your actions in the game. And as you start to raise the security level, raise the morale level of an area, you can establish a base of operations and you can see the effects of what you do in a district. Uh, so you'll, you'll be able to physically see it and you'll see it on your map. Okay, this one comes from... Sorry, uh, just in reply sorry, a little bit yeah, to sorry. this question and the one before, I think. Yeah. Uh, I, for one, want to be able to play the game solo as well. So classes, yeah. yes. Uh, enemies, yes. But I also want to have the opportunity to customize the game and just play it by myself. So it's built like that. You could play it completely alone if you really want to. Mm -hmm. It shines when you start getting involved in co-op. But it's a very, very flexible system. Very nice. Hashtag Ask the Division. This one comes from uh, within the room, Danny Pettit or Petit. I apologize if I uh, butchered your name. Hey, um, the question is, how many weapons can an agent carry? Uh, well, an agent can carry as many weapons as you have slots for in your inventory, but you can have two equipped. So you have a, a main weapon and you have a weapon in a quick, quick slot where you can swap it out. So as much inventory as you can hold. Okay, um, we are going to go back to Twitter. Uh, Supreme Ego underscore. Uh, will we be able to customize? Yeah, like this is me, actually. <laughs> uh, he, he wants to know how much he can make this his own. Um, will we be able to customize our own characters, or will we have to use the one from the demo you have showed us? Do you want me to take that? Yeah, well, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I can fill in. Ryan, why don't you take in. that? <laughs> uh, uh, yes, customization is a big part of the game. So I think uh, we all believe that in RPGs, especially games like The Division, where we want you to spend hopefully thousands and thousands of hours over the next years playing the game, that you're able to really, really customize your, your agent to how you, uh, your representation in the world. Um, so things like clothing, the equipment you, uh, you, you equip yourself with, nice sentence, uh, uh, are, are important in the game. OK, this one comes uh, via Twitch. Thank you for joining in. Um, does the game contain a hunger, thirst, temperature system for survival elements? I will jump across so Matthias doesn't answer this, because we're, we're, uh, we are very aware of, like when uh, David was mentioning how we read your, uh, your emails, we read your posts, we know there's a big interest in uh, uh, real survival mechanics in the game. Um, we want the game to be very, very open and, and uh, uh, accessible to a large mainstream audience, but we, um, we hear the desire, and uh, it's uh, something that we, we definitely are looking at. When we were doing research for this game, I went on uh, survival training a whole week, uh, and it was not fun, I'm telling you. <laughs> so we'll see. All right, um, let us go back to Twitter. Uh, we've got one from L. Zachariah. Will individual abilities have multiple levels, i.e. thermal vision that has three levels of advancement? It depends on, uh, if, if I interpret the question as skills, uh, the uh, the basic skill system, as I said before, is is open in structure. But we're also uh, attaching a 
think of it almost as a little talent tree, layers of, of modifications to each and every skill. So as you progress through the game, you will get to make choices about what to unlock in what order and what to have active at any given time so that you can basically tailor make uh, the skill to fit exactly your playstyle and in some cases fundamentally change how it works. Um, it's also something we believe is really, really helpful if you're playing uh, co-op to be able to switch things up a bit and, and find nice synergies uh, with, the, with the other group members. Or the enemies you're facing. Yes. Because there's AI. Because there is AI yeah. in the game. Um, Mark Warren tweets in. He's got an underscore at the end of his name, just so you know. Uh, using the hashtag Ask the Division, and he asks, "Can you loot the bodies of defeated PvP opponents? What happens to them once they die? How does all of that work? And can I do that right now?" He, I added that last part. Um, so when you die, uh, uh, in the uh, game, or yeah, are we yeah, talking yeah, philosophically? Uh, yeah. um, so we've we've uh, you know we've had interviews on this. We're we're trying to keep PvP a little bit tight vests, uh, uh, tight to the chest because. Uh, I think within Massive and the, the team, we believe this is going to be the, our kind of really special core feature for the game that kind of differentiates us from a lot of the games we were talking about before the stream started. And uh, so, uh, but we have talked about the fact that you can uh, potentially lose the equipment you acquire in Dark Zones and, uh, and other players can take it from you. So absolutely, that's part of uh, the gameplay. Okay, another one from Twitch. Uh, and we were talking about this a little bit before uh, we started. The engine looks amazing. What is the unique feature? I think they want one standout feature uh, that Snowdrop has that no other engine has. Rodrigo? And it's, it's a great question. The, in, in fact, you could argue that the, the race of Homo sapiens doesn't need more game engines. <laughs> but when you make a game engine, you have to put one thing as your number one priority. So one could be stability, one could be multi-platform, you could have many, many things on your number one spot, but that colors everything in the engine. And what we put on number one is efficiency and power to the developers. So it's an incredibly powerful and free uh, engine that gives a lot of autonomy and a lot of power to each developer, which allows them to be very creative. And they can have an idea in the morning, come to work, have it done before lunch, have it in the game and share it with everybody. So that's incredibly sexy if you have good developers. It's a bit more troublesome if you have uh, junior developers because we give them the power to create fantastic bugs, very powerful bugs. <laughs> so that's maybe the drawback. But we've, we've gone for uh, efficiency and autonomy and power to the developers. So that's what Snowdrop uh, is about. And a lot of beauty as well. Um, Akaz writes in on Twitter using hashtag AskTheDivision. Will enemies and characters be level based? How can I get an idea of what area is right for my level slash gear? All right. Uh, yes, absolutely. We, we are a progressive level based game. And so the enemies will also have a level and reflect that. And the way you'll know you're in an area that isn't appropriate is we will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> what happens <Yeah>. when... <laughs> But Ryan, what happens when you die? And then when you die. <laughs> uh, Akaz writes in again, should I stop spamming you with questions or should you hire me as a suggestions for the game consultant? Speaking to David's uh, earlier he should, point. He should follow us on Facebook and become one of the lucky few that we're going to bring over to Sweden and make you part of the dev team. Yeah. 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 Sebastian Spilker is in the room. VIP. Hey, wow, yeah, there he is, dressed up too in the, uh, in the garb. Well done. Uh, his question is, how big can the clan which fights together in the streets be? Is there a limit? Clan size. Yeah, I, I can jump on that one because I can honestly say that's it's not set yet. So we, uh, uh, we definitely want clans to be a big part of the, um, the PvP and, and growing communities, but we don't have a limit set. And the way we work at Massive and, and with the game, as the five of you will find out that come, is we're extremely iterative. So when we put in a new system like David was talking about, we play it, we try it out, and, uh, and we alter it through iteration. So the clan sizes will, uh, uh, I'm sure, where's Bjorn? Uh, they, they'll be limitless. I mean, 
They, they, he they just had a heart attack. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> his, his face was pretty remarkable there. They'll be limitless yeah. or they'll be four. Billions of people in a clan. <laughs> So it'll be somewhere between that, between four and as many, as, as many friends as you have. All right. Uh, that is fair. We're going to take one from Twitch now, and it's another one where we're diving into the question of death. Um, what happens if we die in an online shootout? Do we respawn near our friends or in a random place? New York is a big city. Uh, New Jersey. Yeah. You will... <laughs> 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 uh, we're of course continuously I think everything we make in the game we look at through a various you know various lenses and one of them is always co-op that even though we we really want to protect the ability to play alone we also need to make sure that nothing we do obstructs or uh, you know inversely affects co-op so I think the, the this slightly longer uh, answer that question is that we we're continuously looking for what's the best solution for making sure that you get back with your friends as fast as possible uh, without it being uh, game breaking in you know, how easy it is but mm -hmm. as it stands right now it's going to be uh, not a random location but not with your teammates you need to be punished a little bit if you die you, but as, as we saw in the movie you can also be body revived uh, me not being an engineer, I, I cannot tell you how surprised I was to discover that respawn point is a complete science in itself. <laughs> it's incredibly advanced and it's very, very difficult to do well. Mm -hmm. it, it combines uh, many different things like expectations, psychology, fairness. Uh, so it, it's really, really very complicated. So it's not something that we take lightly. And we're, of course, going to have uh, the ability for you to, to spec skills and abilities to revive someone if you're playing in co-op. So I think that's part of the, the dynamics of the group as well. Senpei01 on Twitter writes, do we have to play with the same people in order to have the same story progress? Absolutely not. How, well, so then, <laughs> are, are we able to expand on that in terms of, I, I mean, we... Sure. Uh, the, uh, the way that the game is structured and set up, so if you and I are playing together and we're progressing the story or we're progressing our, uh, the events in an area or a district, um, that progress is shared. So we don't want to punish you for playing with other people. You go back to your own, your own game and you've, not, you've lost that progress. So anything you do together with other players will be brought back to your universe uh, of the division. And so would that work in the way of like a, kind of like a fog of war sort of deal if you've got New York City and you've done, say, this section with your friend, uh, but you've done this stuff by yourself, your friend hasn't done that, maybe they join you. Like how does that, how does that alter your, your, you know, your partner's uh, experience? Well, well, fog of war is a, a, a very specific uh, type of mechanic and we're, we're not really looking at that, but but you will be, uh, I guess, if I were to join your game and you had done progress that I wasn't involved in, then I know I would not have that, um, uh, that progress just given, gifted to me okay. because I joined your game. Okay. Uh, let's see. Olenberg on Twitter says uh, or asks, how will the clan thingy work? Uh, can we level up as a clan and gain perks or alike? Uh, please see the answer five minutes ago. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Mark Howland is a VIP uh, and asks, can you go a little more in-depth on the survival aspects of the game? How drastically are skills and other things diminished uh, when you haven't ate or drank anything? And will it be a crucial aspect to questing, raiding, PvP, etc.? Did you get all that? Because I, I think I probably That's need to. That's nine questions. Yeah, I need to, I think, go through that one as well. Do you again. want to talk on that, Matthias, or do you want me to take it? Okay. All right, please. Um, so the first part, I guess, was maybe wrapped in the survival thing that I hinted at that we, are, uh, we really, really like and we're taking seriously and, and thinking about. Um, but what we wanted to do with food and water and, and rations or supplies that you fi find in the game is turn the mechanic and make it positive. So it's still a benefit to you, but you don't die if you don't find food and water, which is a mechanic in a lot of more hardcore type games in, in this genre. So we want them to be important, uh, and we want you to find them and, and hold on to them when you get them, but we don't want to punish you for not having them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was a crowd pleaser. Four people like that. Yeah. 
<laughs> and potentially many more on Twitch yes, as well. Yes. Um, speaking of Twitch, we get another question from our uh, viewers enjoying the live stream. Uh, and uh, playing to your idea of hardcore. How hardcore is the division? Uh, do you lose ever? No, we've already talked about the death. Uh, can you drive vehicles? And if so, how customizable are they? You get two and one there. Yes, the vehicle question. Uh, we, you know, with, with the setting that we have and the, the scenario that we set up, uh, uh, vehicles are obviously in New York, so there will be vehicles in the division. Um, generally, this question is, can you drive vehicles in the division? And we're not a game, uh, we're not a racing game, and we're not a driving game. So uh, right now, currently, it's about exploration. It's about we want um, the pace to be, you know, at your own. And, and when you have, when you introduce vehicles into a game, especially an open world game, it really, really changes the dynamic of what you have to build for the world. So we're not looking at that right now. No, and I, and I think, yes, one after that, I think it really struck me hard uh, when the game started to, to come into fruition that how, how fundamentally different it is to experience the world of this size on foot rather than rushing through it in the vehicle. It's, it's, uh, it's something you've got to play to, to see, but uh, it, it's a very detailed personal experience of the world around you that I think is super cool. Um, here's a question from uh, Brian Haas in the room. Uh, you play VIP, um, and I think it's something that probably a lot of people would want to ask. Uh, Brian, if you, uh, yeah, oh, right up top, second row. Uh, you're one of the wooers, I like that. Um, how can a novice player and a veteran, say someone who put in maybe 50 plus hours, uh, enjoy a co-op experience together? That is a great question. Uh, we actually, I've worked on uh, uh, several games in the past that, ha that really struggled with that. If you're talking about the level, you know, we're a progression-based game, your level, Max and I just started, how do we play together? And um, we have a lot of different solutions that we're looking at, but I don't have a, a you know, this is what we're doing for the game right now. Um, but we're definitely aware of it. We want everyone to be able to play with anyone they want and we definitely want people that have been playing the division for months or years to be able to play with someone who just started so it's something that we're also taking a lot of time to make sure we get right all right i know you've been very hungry to ask a question uh, has it been answered yet would you like to ask no uh, definitely not um so i know a lot of the questions and the demo especially uh you that's know, me putting my mic in. Okay. describe how the gameplay is and what I was questioning was, um, what is the story like? Because I know there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of post post ap apocalyptic games like, for example, Last of Us, uh, which really uh, exemplifies how um, the story is told. So I was wondering how the story is told in this game, and uh, if you guys had any focus on this. So okay. that's my question. Absolutely, great question. Uh, uh, the, the, the short answer is, is that we want you to experience the story in the game. But uh, uh, the, great, the, great, uh, the, the, the great thing about when you saw, when Matthias was talking about Echo and, and how that's going to be important for you in the game, that's how we're solving the kind of the narrative storytelling. It works with multiplayer. It works with, it works with different level differences. We can, we can have story elements. We can have elements for the district clues. So um, that will be very uh, important in that. But uh, as to finding out what happened in the story, you need to wait. But there's, there's something, I think, very special with The Division, and that it's, it's not post-apocalyptic. It's not too late. You know, you're just at that moment when everything is about to go to hell, <laughs> but you can make a difference. And that, to me, is extre extremely exciting with the story. We, so we're, we're actually running short on time, and we've got a lot of questions that we still need to get to. Sorry. Uh, from Twitter, uh, Joshio Morer um, writes through Ask the Division hashtag, uh, any plan that could keep players playing this game when it's already released? So po they, they already want it. The game isn't out, but they want to know what the post-launch plans are. Excellent. <laughs> Do you bring up the Excel? Tell us, oh, yeah. tell us about the story. No, I mean, uh, we get that a lot. It's a, it's a, great, it's a good question. Mm -hmm. But honestly, the team is, is really, really focused on, on this game and, and getting it out uh, as qu soon as possible, making it uh, live up to the expectations that everyone in this room has, including the people sitting here. And so once that's accomplished, then we'll worry about how we add to it. 
That's fair. That is fair. Um, okay, we've got another question from the Twitch stream. Um, I'm going to basically boil it down, though, to the core idea, which is uh, the curiosity about any potential crafting system. Ada, do you want to take that? Uh, Anna's yes. staying quiet, for the uh, record. If you... uh, actually, crafting is, is uh, it's close to my heart. I think it's really, really uh, important in these games. I think it, it's, it fits our, our IP, you know, the, the whole fact that anything in this type of scenario would be important. It doesn't matter what it is, you're going to want to save it and use it for something. Uh, so we are uh, making sure, it's a, it's a lot about like my, the answer I did with the, the grouping, what fits the, the setting we have, what fits the, uh, the, the universe we're creating, um, and what works in a crafting, you know, a, a classic crafting uh, 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 system. So uh, coming soon, TBD. Uh, also from Twitch, uh, question about exploration. Um, can we explore everywhere in the city, like inside houses and skyscrapers, or are they just for show? Uh, I mean, as I said during the uh, the demo that we that we showed, it's a, it's a very natural part of of New York City, uh, and of course you're going to be able to to go into buildings, onto rooftops, uh, and down into the underground. Then, of course, there are limitations to just how much, uh, but we're pushing as far as we possibly can. Snowdrop will bring us the light. Oh yes. Um, are there fighting animations towards PvP, like punching and stealth animations? I'm assuming that's like a, a melee that is a or very a very specific question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, only right hooks and uh, shin kicks. Was that a shin kick? Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know what that was. I'm <laughs> not a very tough person. Um, so, uh, will there be melee in the game? Yes, absolutely. That's We're, the impression know. I got. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Um, as to the specifics, I don't want to go into that, that right now. Fair enough. Uh, what sort of voice talent can we expect to hear? Is it customizable? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Twitch. <laughs> I don't even know how to answer that. I don't know. Um, you can, cheapest custom, you can possible customize voice talent. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can do a community thing and everyone can get their voice in the division, which actually is a, not a bad idea. Where's Antoine? <laughs> yes. All right. Well, uh, that's pretty much all we have time for at, at this point. Um, thank you guys for doing this. Thank you guys for submitting your questions. Thank you to everyone viewing um, on Twitch. We will be back uh, from the Uplay Lounge. This is uh, Ubisoft Live at E3. Uh, hashtag Uplay Lounge. Hashtag Ask the Division was certainly a, a wonderful success. Um, gentlemen, thank you very much for taking some time out of this very busy E3 to share some insight into the game. Matthias, David, Ryan, appreciate it so much. Round of applause. All right. Thank you guys in the audience. Thank you everyone for uh, watching the live stream. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time. And we've got a jam-packed day as far as the Ubisoft content. So once again, uh, live from the Uplay Lounge, I'm Zach Cooper on behalf of Antoine Amon. Great job, buddy, uh, putting this together. Good job, Antoine. Um, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Good night.